Hey guys, Slimber here, aka the world's biggest autismo. Sorry, Blue and Teddy, it's, that's my term now. And uh, ignore this background behind me. I don't know where this came from at all. And uh, today we're doing a video on Actual Justice Warrior. Now, I found out about this guy through my brother like two or three years ago. And I've thought about doing a video on him for a while. And uh, I figure this time we will because he says some stuff that's misleading. At least in the first couple minutes I saw this video before I decided to make a video on it. And uh, yeah, let's get right into this, shall we? A myth is something that is widely believed to be true despite the fact that it's false. And a lot of times, myth making is pretty simple. You just repeat something over and over and over again, and then people will believe it to be so. And one of the most pernicious myths that we encounter when talking about criminal justice related topics is this myth that mass incarceration just doesn't work. Yes, guys, it's a myth that mass incarceration doesn't work because it's totally working right now, right? I mean, here's the thing, I really don't have to do a video on this because I think even most conservatives would hear this point and go, that's fucking stupid. But, whatever, it's content, you know, and should be entertaining. Uh, but yeah, you know, mass incarceration is totally working right now. Sweden, Denmark, they obviously don't have less crime than we do now. Even though we've had mass incarceration for 30, 40 years. Mass incarceration? There's no benefits to that policy at all. Mass incarceration? It's terrible in every way. And every time you debate a lefty on criminal justice related stuff or somebody who's just not informed, this is what you end up hearing about. We have too many people in prison. There's no justification for it. Look at the recidivism rate. It's absolutely terrible. But I'm going to be busting that myth today. I'm going to be debunking, disputing, refuting, and destroying it because I didn't think of another synonym, so that one didn't even rhyme. Not, neither did debunking. Debunking also didn't rhyme with disputing and refuting. I mean, listen... <laughs> I think it's a little different because I rap, but like, I feel like that should be obvious that debunking doesn't rhyme with disputing or refuting. Just like destroying doesn't rhyme with all three of those words. But whatever, doesn't matter. But before we get into that, I have a wonderful sponsor for you guys today that I'm actually really excited about. So I'm going to roll into it and then I'll catch you on. Ah, fuck off. We're going to skip this shit. I don't want to see his goddamn sponsor, bro. There is an ideology that is afoot and it is behind most of what we're hearing about criminal justice related topics in the news media today. And that ideology is called penal welfareism. It's basically that the criminal justice system should serve as some kind of welfare intervention tool to address the underlying causes of crime. Now, we've talked about multiple different times on this channel how what the left posits as underlying causes for crime don't appear to actually correlate with criminality and in fact we have clear instances where the three underlying causes that the left clings to the most that being poverty income inequality and racism have been reducing and yet crime has gone up seemingly independent of that however so um i just did some research about that and what we measure poverty by i don't know why but it's gonna look like shit by the way on the top of my head because of the white background but uh, what we measure poverty by is uh, basically what we considered in the 60s to be the basic necessities to maintain a minimally adequate life, which is food, shelter, and clothing, right? However, a lot of analysts nowadays uh, aren't too with this because basically it doesn't really count for anything else these days that's important. For modern life, for example, like a phone bill, you know, you really didn't need a phone as much as you do now in 1960, so you didn't have a phone bill to pay, uh, internet for your kids that go to school, uh, you know, transportation is still necessary, even more necessary these days. A lot of things that even just to work these days should be counted that isn't counted. So that entire poverty number that, by the way, the article he's quoting is in the description, um, if you want to go look for his video in the description, but that article he's quoting is kind of bullshit, let's just be honest, because yeah, it, it comes from the US government who hasn't counted the same things for poverty since the 1960s, since 
fucking Lyndon B. Johnson was president. However, just like mass incarceration being this terrible policy that absolutely didn't work, they've repeated this myth enough times for it to be true. Now, I've told you multiple different times that root causes aren't any more important than any other type of cause, and if poverty actually drives you to commit crimes, then the solution to that is not to treat poverty as a mitigating factor, it's to treat poverty as an aggravating factor because if you have something that makes you more prone to criminality, you need stronger deterrence, not weaker deterrence, against that criminality. What in the actual fuck? Now listen, no article him or I brings up in this specific thing will actually debunk the other because it's a philosophical debate. However, what the actual fuck? Are you pro are you proposing that poor people be profiled? Are you proposing discrimination, more discrimination against poor people through the fucking justice system? Oh my fucking god. That is a dog shit take, dude. Complete dog shit. Now, because the left is arguing from a weak position when it comes to criminal justice, something not supported by facts, and they can't support their arguments by the data. Kind of a weird, like, generalization of the left, because, you know, there's a wide range of beliefs about criminal justice on the left. Like, for example, you know, there's tankies who believe in the fucking gulags. There's people who believe, you know, maybe we should have more of a European style or like a, you know, uh, kind of what Sweden has. There's a wide variety of beliefs on the left about how prison reform should be happen, but you're a grifter, so you don't really give a shit, do you? Also, once again, it doesn't work, so how is that a weak argument? It actually doesn't work. Oh, wait, okay, maybe this is his argument. We'll see as this comes up. Maybe he's saying it does work to punish people. Which is fucking useless. Because we don't need people punished. Because they're gonna get out. So wouldn't you rather them be rehabilitated and not do it again? Whoa! What an interesting idea! They need to argue against tactics that actually work, that go against their ideology, by undercutting them based on false premises that they lay out. They assert their values in place of what these programs are actually intended to do, and then judge them by those metrics and deem them to be failures. Okay, so he's going with the argument I figured he would. The, the fucking dumbass argument of... It's not about rehabilitation, it's about punishment, which nobody is disagreeing with. This whole video, if that's your whole video, that's pointless. Because nobody disagrees with it. Their point is that making it about punishment and not rehabilitation is the problem! Because them being in prison and getting their freedom taken away is the should be the punishment. And they should be rehabilitated. Something should actually be done to make sure they don't do the crimes again. Like, for example, maybe we should have laws in place so corporations can't just discriminate against goddamn felons. And you see this all the time, lefties claiming to be experts about prisons or a criminal justice system when they don't know the first thing about crime or how to prevent it or how crime dropped in the United States post the 1990s. I'll give you a hint, mass incarceration was a big part of it. It seems like overwhelmingly our prison system is taking in especially if we're talking low mid uh, or low medium and uh, like prison camps and stuff like that even on oh, the you federal just want level to be, like, more we're talking and we're talking yeah yeah exactly okay, like it, i don't want i don't want to go on, like I mean, on a yeah. general yeah. level we are so taking in like petty criminals and pumping out much yeah what you, you know, were so i got it i got it now that clip from my debate which i did live at debatecon the first ever live event in person hosted by the modern day debates channel is exactly a perfect example of what I'm talking about. In that clip, Xander Hall talks about how prisons are just making criminals worse. It's not rehabilitating them. Even though he didn't really say the word rehabilitation, that is what can be inferred from what he's saying. It's making them into super criminals. And by that metric, the metric of rehabilitation, prisons do not work. 
But here's the thing, saying that prisons don't work because they don't rehabilitate criminals is like saying that a car doesn't work because it can't take you across the Atlantic Ocean. That's not really what prisons are intended to do. And then they're fucking useless. If that's not what they're for, then they're useless. Let's let's take this take, right? Let's say we need to get across the Atlantic Ocean. Okay? And we have a car, but we could trade that car in for a boat or a plane. And we need to get to the Atlantic Ocean for whatever reason. We really, really need to get there. And your answer is, well, the car isn't going to take us to the Atlantic Ocean, across the Atlantic Ocean. No shit! That's the better you know, situation to compare this to. They're fucking useless. At this point, then all they are is, here's a little timeout where you might get raped a couple times, uh, you'll get beaten by cops who had a bad fucking day, you might join a gang. They're fucking useless, dude. If they are not doing rehabilitation, what they are not, and still putting people out, then they're fucking useless. One of the architects and the biggest supporters of mass incarceration and the ideology behind mass incarceration is somebody named James Q. Wilson. Somebody who, by the way, should be credited with saving more lives related to his criminal justice related ideals than any other person, any other thinker in American history. Because for the most part, the prevailing ideology that led to the crime spike was the very same ideology that we're seeing today that is also leading to the crime spike. The idea that that criminals are victims the idea that the real problem is poverty and if we just spend enough money on welfare programs we will arrest poverty as soon as we get a description as soon as we find out what it's wearing and thus crime will cease or reduce and nothing related to punishment or anything like that works at all right guys that is why crime is so high in sweden pretty much all of the fucking netherlands most of europe that have way better prisons and actually rehabilitate their prisoners compared to we do Oh, it, it doesn't? It's significantly lower? Are you fucking kidding me? What I'm going to say is going to be incredibly depressing to a lot of you because it would be really nice if we had some silver bullet that could rehabilitate criminals, could turn thugs, gang members, all these people into productive members of society. But all the data shows that rehabilitation programs simply do not work. People recidivate when they leave prisons, and this argument has been used by the left. That right there, in purple. Link up there. I might just do some uh, research on that little article you quote. Because just doing some, you know, Googling and stuff like that and seeing information from researchers. Uh, it appears that that article says a lot of bullshit when I was reading it too. So, the so one, I read through this article again, and it's complete bullshit. Uh, they quote the GDP as a reason that, um, the poverty fell, which is nonsense because the GDP only, uh, goes for, what is that? Did a couple, looked at a couple of these sites, but Investopedia is one I do sort of trust. Uh, it's the monetary value of all finished goods and services made within a country during a specific time period. It's used to estimate the size of its economy and growth rate. Which doesn't really say shit when, well, wealth inequality is as high as it is today. So... My question is, why does he only source this thing, right? The only thing he sources in an entire video is this one fucking article by this one bullshit magazine. Nothing else. Literally nothing else. 
How are you destroying logic when you can't even find other sources? How are you saying most analysts agree with this when it takes me two minutes to find analysts, a lot of them, that disagree with you? And you're only looking at one article! So there's no point in even doing more of this video. This guy, just like the people who are writing this article, is full of shit. He's a grifter. Fuck you. You can't leave a dislike, so you might as well leave a like. Slimber out.